ആ കിണറ്റിൽ ഉള്ള വെള്ളങ്ങൾ കുടിക്കാൻ പറ്റാത്ത രീതിയായി ചോറ് വെക്കുമ്പോ തന്നെ ചോറ് ആകെപ്പാട് ചാണകം പോലെ ഇങ്ങനെ ചീഞ്ഞു പോകും ഡോക്ടർ പറഞ്ഞത് റെഗുലറായി വെള്ളം കുടിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഈ എല്ലിന് ചതക്കേടുണ്ടാകുകയും കണ്ണെരിച്ചിലുണ്ടാകുകയും തലവേദന വരികയൊക്കെ ചെയ്യുന്നു പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നു കുളിച്ചാലും തല ചുറ്റല് ആ കൈയും കാലൊക്കെ ഒരു വേദനയും കുടച്ചിലും കാരണം ഉള്ള ഊറ്റിനെ മുഴുക്ക ഭരിച്ചെടുത്ത് The Centre for Science and Environment is no ordinary place and the people who work there, no ordinary people. What then makes the Delhi NGO, popularly known as the CSE, so special? What are you doing? I'm collecting water samples supplied by Delhi Jal Board to be tested in our lab. But we all know it's not drinkable. Delhi Jal Board is supposed to supply you with safe drinking water. The Delhi Jal Board is the authority responsible for supplying drinking water to India's capital, Delhi. By testing Delhi's water, famously known to cause Delhi belly, isn't the CSE wasting its time? India's groundwater is not only drying up fast, but is also getting contaminated. And it is in this regard that we said that let's try out and check the water quality in Delhi and we looked at municipal water, we also looked at groundwater, but we could not get any trend. What's so confusing is the degree and the kind of pollution. Water samples from different locations in the city have traces of different pesticides, although the water supply in each case is the same, that is, the Jal board. To arrive at a positive answer, the CSE would have to map water supply lines to the entire city very costly exercise and the CSE doesn't have the money so the CSE comes up with another answer test water supplied by those who claim that their water is pure and safe to drink pure drinking water kinle bund bund mein vishwas bund bund mein vishwas it all meant that a good water is all about every drop and that's what we deliver to the country Everyone knows that bottled mineral water is safe. That's why it costs so much. Surely the CSE is wasting their time by wanting to test it.
pesticides were detected in all the samples. The same brand in Bombay has got a different profile of contamination, but the Delhi production has got a different profile of contamination, which clearly says that uh, it's not cleaned up. The CSC wanted to discover why water is contaminated and why that contamination changes with a change in location. To find out, the CSE had to test the untreated water being used by companies that sold bottled mineral water. Would the bottling companies, some of them multinational giants, allow the CSE to investigate? The answer clearly was, no way. Basically lying, giving stories. Somewhere someone said that I'm starting a hotel in this area, I would like to check the water. Somewhere someone said that Sonia Gandhi is going to have a meeting in this area. I'm a Congress official. I would like to check the water. There are a lot of people who are going to come. That's happening in Ghaziabad. would like to check the water. I mean, different stories, different places. It's a journalistic trick. I'm sure all the journalists will know. <laughs> if the multinationals weren't going to cooperate, then others would prove to be less intransigent. Drinking water was best investigated in smaller towns where people were unwilling to pay 12 rupees, that's 24 cents, for a litre of water. Kanpur is a small industrial town in North India. Here water is sold in plastic pouches. Each pouch costs one rupee, that's two cents, a bargain price that makes perfect business sense for Mirinda, not the drink, but the boy. He's also called Mirinda. He gets water free from a hand pump. Packages it, then sells it, trying to beat the big multinationals at their own game. Mirinda's example is not isolated. There are many boys like him earning their existence from selling water pouches. Interstate bus terminals and railway stations are the best hangouts for boys like Marinda, some of whom recycle discarded plastic bottles refilled with water from any municipal outlet. The water costs nothing. Their price, five rupees. That's 10 cents a bottle. The buyers clearly have little choice. हमें तो उस पानी पर भी विश्वास नहीं जो हमको घर में बिकने को मार्केट में हाँ मिलता है फिर ट्रेन्स में तो मजबूरी है हालांक में जान फंस जाती है तब मजबूरी में पानी खरीदना पड़ता है what then is the difference between these enterprising boys selling free water in pouches and the multinationals selling attractively packaged mineral water at several times the price? Perhaps only the scale of their operations and the exorbitant price.
The CSE's suspicions were well founded. There really was no difference between the two. Some plants with better technology were able to reduce their pesticide content slightly. Others were not able to do that. So there was a clear correlation between groundwater pesticide content and bottled water pesticide content. The period between the CSE study and the publication of its report was filled with suspense. We were confident that the product which we were making adhered to the best acceptable standards anywhere in the world. The results, when they finally appeared, were shocking. Lindane was detected in 94% samples and DDT was detected in 70% of the samples. Melathion was detected in 85% of the samples, 110 times higher than the European norms. We were not benchmarking against EU standards at that point of time. Very honestly, I was uh, not even aware what were the EU standards. <laughs> Very quickly, we regrouped, we sent our product for testing and tested it against the EU standards and were very pleasantly surprised, though not by design, we were meeting EU standards with the product. According to the CSE report, total pesticides residue in all samples was 36 times higher than the European Union standards. Although the Bureau of Indian Standards had set limits for pesticides in bottled water, it didn't mention either the names of permissible pollutants nor their quantity considered to be safe. This meant enough leeway for manipulation. They essentially said that the pesticide residue should be below detectable level and the equipment that was used to detect the pesticides would actually not detect the pesticides if they were found below this particular range. Ultimately, you have to look at the whole full dietary assessment and see whether there is a real risk or not. If the total consumption of pesticides or ingestion of, uh, in, uh, of pesticides is within the acceptable safe limits, I don't think it warrants change of regimes. Please uh, change the standards so that you have quantifiable limits so that then you can hold the company accountable. I don't think there is any justification for going in for these kind of standards when Indian standards which were in vogue were based on drinking water guidelines issued by the WHO. This intrigued us because primarily because we knew that Pepsi had the capacity to treat uh, pesticides in its bottled water. We also knew that in the range of products we had found actually Pepsi was one of the cleanest. So we could not understand why was Pepsi lobbying so hard and we were also getting news at that stage that the two soft drink companies were lobbying very hard against the setting of standards for pesticide residues in bottled water. We were not looking at it only from our perspective. We were looking at it from a broader industry perspective that there are 800 manufacturers of bottled water in this country and uh, they and if a large number of them were to close down because of adoption of these standards, which are not going to contribute a great deal to the health and benefit of the consumer, then it would really not be a fair business uh, position. If Pepsi were really concerned about the business prospects of smaller units in the bottled water industry, were they fully aware of what actually happens in these units? Units like this are widespread. Many localities have them. With no check on the quality of drinking water, it's very much a cottage industry. It doesn't require a large investment. Water is free because in India, if you own the land legally, you also own the assets of the land. So just pump out as much water as you want, package it, 
and sell it. So, who was Pepsi really concerned about? With more than a thousand packaged drinking water manufacturers in India, it's an industry worth a thousand crore rupees. That's 217 million US dollars a year. You don't necessarily need a business brain to see the obvious profits in such a venture. Water treatment in a liter of bottle, using the best technology, costs 25 paise. That's less than half a cent. The cost of a plastic bottle, two rupees. That's four cents. Packaging cost, one rupee and 25 paise. That's less than three cents. Transportation cost, 10 to 25 paise. That's less than half a cent. Sales tax and excise would be additional costs. Bringing the price to four rupees a liter. That's eight cents. That liter of water is being sold at 12 rupees. That's 24 cents, which is only three rupees or six cents less than a liter of milk. Companies pay less than seven and a half pesce, that's less than a quarter of a cent for every thousand litres of water pumped from under the ground. The legal argument that the owner of the land owns its groundwater resources as well has led to seriously damaging consequences. <laughs> Plachi <laughs> Mada a dreamy, dusty village in the Palghat district of Kerala in India South. The global giant Coca-Cola has its bottling unit here. The Hindustan Coca-Cola Beverages Company acquired 38 acres of agricultural land and began this plant in the year 2000. We decided that we should be available in every village. From the eight wells within its boundaries, the company pumped out more than half a million litres of water every day. What are we competing for? We are competing for the share of the gut. It's the share of the throat and that everybody drinks so much of liquid. Cutthroat competition left several surrounding villages with little or no water, or highly polluted water where it was available. In 2002, villagers began to protest. They wanted the plant closed. Surprisingly, all the political parties sided with the multinational giant because of pressure from the highly politicized trade unions. For the politicians and the trade unions, a few hundred jobs were far more important than the survival of village communities.
The widespread protests were ignored by the press and television, thanks to the advertising revenues from the multinationals. In 2003, the village panchayat took Coca-Cola to court to protect the public interest. The judgment of the lower court was favorable to the villagers in Plachimada. It said, the use of water is free only when it's being used for domestic or agricultural purposes by the owner. The court also said, that groundwater was a public commodity. Its commercial use had to be restricted. Coca-Cola took the matter to a higher court where it is still fighting its case. Elsewhere, the company continues to extract groundwater to produce soft drinks without paying for the water it draws in vast quantities. We went first with our soft drinks, then we have our juices, then we have water, then we have coffee and tea now. So we are trying to be a beverage company and that's how we are trying to position to get the share of the throat. Plachi Mada continues to protest. They know that today is already the day before and they are not prepared to let tomorrow become the day after. Meanwhile, the CSE was flooded with requests to examine the soft drinks for pesticides. After all, water was their main ingredient. The CSE consented and the matter was taken up in the larger public interest. Lindane is a deadly insecticide for the eradication of mosquitoes and for killing head lice. It was found in all the soft drinks. In addition to the pest control, this has been also used in, uh, as a treatment of scabies uh, and a treatment of head lice. Also. DDT is used to kill mosquitoes. It is banned in many countries because it affects the brain and the reproductive system. DDT was detected in 81% of the samples. In Coca-Cola, it was nine times higher than the European Union standards. It's a great in Pepsi, it was 16 times higher. <laughs> and in Mirinda, 42 times higher. Chlorpyrifos, used to paralyze and kill pests, was found in all the samples. In Mirinda, it was 72 times higher than the EU standards. I love, I love. Once exposed over a period of time, it can give rise to, again, a lot of CNS side effects, for example, irritability, forgetfulness, um, uh, and uh, a lot of chronic CNS or brain problems can occur. Malathion, used for killing cockroaches and similar pests, was detected in 97% of the samples. In Mirinda Lemon, its concentration was 196 times higher than European Union standards. That is something extremely striking, I must say. Um, because if, if one says five times, ten times, but this much is really, if, if a person is normal, is going to become a person. 
On average, the total pesticides in Coca-Cola were 30 times higher than the European Union standards. And in all PepsiCo brands, they were 36 times higher. For a comparative study, Indian samples are compared with those from the US. The result? Similar brands, different standards. The foreign samples of the similar brands which were tested were found to have no pesticides and the same brands in India, Indian market, they were found to have pesticides several times higher than the European norm. appalled us was the fact that there were virtually no regulations for pesticide rescues and soft drinks that existed in the country. The discovery of pesticides and soft drinks made shocking news. The people reacted sharply. Parliament took serious note. And a public debate began. Someone wanted to get some kind of mileage out of it, some kind of thrill out of it, and they did it. I guess, you know, it goes something to the psychology, you know, that here is a here is an attack on large multinationals and uh, and somebody saying they are found wanting and people like to believe that because uh, there is a certain pleasure uh, in that however since the fact that the sales have recovered and the market business is as usual i think it's a sporadic uh, or a momentary uh, belief structure which develops at that point of time, which over a period of time, people forget. Yes, public memory is short. People still consume soft drinks. Are the giant multinationals eventually responsible and can they be held to account? Will they lie low until the noise abates and the issue is forgotten? or will they clean up their act for the sake of their consumers? Their annual revenue from soft drink sales is six to seven thousand crore rupees. That's about 1,500 million US dollars. And the same MNCs supply pesticide-free bottled drinks in the US and in Europe. So why, when they get the money and have the technology in India, is their policy different for the Indian consumer? The issue of pesticides brought together fierce competitors that in the normal course would never have shared a common platform. Coke and Pepsi held a joint press conference to dismiss the CSE's report. scientific community episode tarnishing we hope that industry would not like to have shock like this again uh, because it, it's a slap in the face of industry when someone comes out with a report saying that your product is not good. Parliament banned the sale of soft drinks in its canteen and set up a joint parliamentary committee to look into the issue. In the history of independent India, this was the fourth joint parliamentary committee and the first ever on public health. Its purpose was to verify the CSE report. The NGO itself 
was now under the scam. That was clearly an inquiry against us. And I did have by then um, the um, officials of the, um, I think it was the IB who visited us to check on us and to ask who we were and what were we doing. We did get um, um, inquiries from the government by then asking for 20 years of our accounts, 20 years of our balance sheet, 20 years of our funding, 20 years of staff uh, people who have worked with us. They wanted to know each staff member who has worked with us for the last 20 years and where they are today. The Joint Parliamentary Committee used a magnifying glass to study each aspect of the issue. The CSE burned midnight oil. They knew they would have to confront not only hostile politicians, but also the world's largest multinationals. Their strength and their case rested on information, knowledge and logic. presentation then began because my colleagues did manage to get a screen and we started our presentation and as we worked through the presentation I could see the mood of the room changing as well. I, there were still people who were against us, some who were uncertain about us but some who were willing to believe in us because they could see that what we were saying was not irrational. What we were saying was based on facts, what we were saying concerned, which I believe politicians care about, which is the health of people and ordinary people. The CSE tests were carried out at their pollution monitoring laboratory. Coke, Pepsi and their representatives questioned the validity of the CSE findings because they claimed its laboratory wasn't accredited. Testing is so sophisticated that when you go to one person and go to one billion, you need to test one item or molecule in one billion. So for this sophisticated testing, no one can do it. This means that you need accredited laboratories, which are very small in India. You need laboratories that can do it. You need to put an instrument in your house and you can't do it in your home. There are three accredited laboratories in India which are uh, which are very much popular and we are, which are which are always into this business so it was finally it was finally verified by these three laboratories and most two or three all 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 the laboratories they confirmed it the findings of the CSA you are getting the same pesticides through other sources by way of fruits vegetables and for which the standards are different because on those products, the residues come not by contamination or by accident. They are put there by design to provide crops the protection. So if you are going to get some pesticides from fruits, vegetables, then getting zero from water. Uh, Whatever pesticide we are having in the daily food habit, through the daily food habit, that is the perfect, perfect quantity. But once you take this Pepsi, Coke or any other thing, which is not a part of your food packet, food uh, uh, packet. So you have to you have to ensure that it should not increase your tolerance capacity. Pepsi and Coca-Cola unleashed a media onslaught to rubbish all CSE claims. Pepsi Cola can never be safe. Never. Indian film stars like Amir Khan uh, and Shah Rukh Khan the top paying um, film, st um, film stars as well as Amitabh Bachchan don't seem to have any self-respect for Indian consumers and the rights of Indian consumers. Are Baba, laboratory mein test hua, test. Unfortunately for the CSE, people in India worship their cricketers and film stars. Pepsi and Coke commercials that use film stars and cricketers as brand ambassadors to sell their products stole much of the thunder from the issue and the consumer became prey to powerful persuasion. <coughs> Amir Khan drinks it, so we are fine. It's not because the government regulations say we are fine. It's not because tests say that we are fine, but Amir Khan gives us a certificate of safety. And I think that is very, very sad. The Joint Parliamentary Committee, initially impatient with the CSE's findings, was beginning to show concern. It was now a serious matter of public health 
consumer rights and corporate accountability. The Joint Parliamentary Committee had no choice but to discuss and debate the policy that governed the beverage industry and decide whether that policy required change. There is an apocryphal, if not absurd, side to the pesticide in soft drink story. In Guntur, a district of Andhra Pradesh, nearly 300 kilometers from Hyderabad, farmers are using soft drinks as pesticides for their crops. Why not? They kill pests. The region has fertile land, and the main crops are cotton, chilies, and paddy. Farmers from this area were in the news for the larger number of suicides that had taken place on account of heavy crop failure year after year, owing to pests. So began the search for a cost-effective pesticide. It ended with Pepsi and Coke. This is Lakshmaya, a cotton farmer shopping for pesticides. His next destination, the local grocery shop, to buy Pepsi or Coke. He intends mixing normally used pesticides with the soft drink and then spraying his crop with the concoction. For him, there's nothing peculiar. Other farmers do just the same. This is the only region in the country where a black market in soft drinks is rampant. A litre of any cola is sold for a minimum of 50 rupees, or approximately one US dollar. Babu Rao has managed to get two litres of a cola called Thumbs Up. He mixes two ounces of Thumbs Up with an equal amount of actual pesticide. This concoction is now ready for the first round of crop spraying. There's a very simple reason for the farmer's preference for this unusual practice. It's cheap. Earlier, a farmer would spend about 3,000 rupees, that's about 60 US dollars, on pesticides. Now he spends a fraction of that amount, merely 250 rupees, that's 5 US dollars for the same quantity of cola. This experiment began in the fields of adjoining Maharashtra state two years ago. It's spreading slowly. First, the Adilabad district of Andhra, and now all the way eastward to Guntur. A 4,000 crore rupee or 900 million US dollar pesticide industry is getting anxious and wants soft drink companies to suspend sales to this region. <laughs> 2004, Joint Parliamentary Committee submits its report, appreciates the role of the CSE, asks the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare to set standards for soft drinks. 8th December 2005, government presented in Parliament its action taken report. The report is an example of how our ministries have mastered the fine art of passing the buck. The report merely informs us of those JPC recommendations that have been forwarded to various ministries. Work ostensibly done is stuck under work that is actually not done at all. Like many such reports, the JPC report remains unimplemented. Once the JPC has given the recommendation that all the uh, soft drinks are not uh, 
good for your good for your health they are dangerous they are harmful and the csc findings have been vindicated by the other laboratories by the jpc finally so as long as you are not able to implement the recommendations of the committee the sell of the 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 distribution or the supply of this soft drink should be stopped immediately the multinationals continue with their blame game and lobby against regulations and standards for soft drinks sometimes uh, you know you wonder whether it is for the consumers reasons or whether it is uh, some other agenda which is being played out as the cola companies like to say ye pyaas hai badi they need to expand to conquer and to grow is a thirst that's unquenchable being within an arms reach of desire and that's what we are now heading to meanwhile the cse continues to probe and to search and to research i'm very keen to do analysis and i should be doing it i want to see a correlation between soft drink sale and sale of digene uh, or, or or say antacid because uh, people who do drink soft drink do complain extensively about acidity <coughs> and uh, i have a hunch that probably there is a direct correlation between antacid and uh, uh, soft drink sales and when their next report becomes public we'll be there to tell you about it